Tell her, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shady. It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. It's been a long time. I'm sorry I've been away so long. My name is Shady. I never meant to leave you. Never meant to leave you. You see that chick in the gym checking me out? Any second I'm about. Hey guys, so sorry I haven't posted in a while, but um. I was having some technical difficulties with uploading my video to the site. So I'm back and I'm here to catch up. So I'm going to do all three weeks that I missed in this video. Um, first one is motivation. So what motivates me to continue to transition and not quit because of negative responses? Who has been your biggest supporter and when you start to feel down where or to who do you turn to? Um, well, in terms of why I continue to transition is um, I'm a strong believer in you have to do this for you. And, you know, it's your life. It's, you know, <laughs> basically it's your life and it's you who have to live it. Um, so I don't see much point in and I think it's really wrong if you transition for someone else or because of someone else. Um, biggest support and motivator. Myself. Plays into the same thing. Um, when I start to feel down, where or to whom do you turn to? Um, well, depression for me doesn't hit just because I'm trans. I mean, it hits everybody for different reasons. Um, I'm not saying that I suffer from it. Um, but I mean, if I'm down, I just try and distract myself and do something else. Um, um, legalities. How, is imp how important is it to you to have your name or gender market ch legally changed? How are you going about getting them changed? What kind of obstacles do or did you face? Um, well, I haven't done this yet. And I don't plan on doing it until next summer. Um, because I go to school in New York, but I live in Philadelphia. So it's kind of hard to do at school. Um, for me, with the name and gender marker, it's not so important right now. Um, I mean, I start tea on Tuesday. So... When I'm at work, you know, it's not that big a deal that they know my female name, they know um, all that stuff, because I don't see myself working there other than this summer. Um, I mean, I don't know if things may change and I may go back next summer, if I'm looking for a job next summer. Um, and at school, you know, I don't find it a big deal, because, I mean, it allowed me to room with um, some of my good friends who, I mean, they're girls, but allowed me to get an apartment with them through university housing. Um, but next summer I plan on getting my name legally changed. Um, my guess is that the gender marker will get changed when I have top surgery. Um, and with the whole name change and stuff, apparently it's really not like Pennsylvania is a good state to change your name in, like in terms of their process. Um, they're pretty welcoming of it or something. I don't know. But my the doctor I go to for my tea prescription, who is now my general physician, um, the Mazzoni Center, they said they could help me with it, um, put me in contact with people who would know what to do and that kind of thing. So that'll be fine. Um, what kind of obstacles did you face? I don't really... <laughs> I can't answer that question um, because I use... I mean, I use my, um, birth name and gender at work, um, no one at work knows. Um, what kind of options? Well, fortunately I still buy cigarettes, so I still have to use my ID, you know, to buy them, which is frustrating because, you know, once, one time, the guy at 7-Eleven, he didn't even believe that my ID was me, because... I mean, my ID's four years old now, three years old, and um, 
in the picture I have really long hair. Like, down to my butt kind of hair. Um, and like, he just wouldn't, flat out, would not believe me that that was me. Like, he just wouldn't take it. It took me like 20 minutes to convince him that that was me. I had to show him like, my school ID and all the other stuff. Like, he just didn't get it. Um, so that's something, like, I'm a little worried about, um, when it comes to, like, changes with tea, how, how susceptible people will be to seeing my ID. Um, but I mean, come next summer, I'll get a change, so it's not like I'll be suffering for that long. In the wrong body. Do you feel that this experience adequately describes your transgender experience? No. Is this how you explain transgender to non-trans people? No. If you have the sensation of feeling trapped, does it get better or worse with transitioning? I don't know, I'm just starting. Do you think societal gender norms influence your gender identity, or is it mostly a biological feeling? Okay, let me see. Let me explain my nose. Um, I don't think I was born in the wrong body. I mean, scientifically, this is the body I'm supposed to be in. I mean, according to my chromosomes and all that. Um, how is, is this how you explain transgender and non-trans people? No. Um, how do I, I don't think I've ever been asked what transgender is. Um, I've been asked what I plan to go through like, in terms of surgery and hormones and stuff like that, but I don't think anyone doesn't know, or at least anyone I've come encountered with, doesn't know what transgender is. Um, I wouldn't say I feel trapped by my body, but more or less limited by it. Um, it's just some kind of hurdle that I have to get over. Um, I mean, I wouldn't trade... I wouldn't trade my experiences for the past 19 years to go back in time and be born male. Um, I had a great growing up and, you know, being in a female body allowed me to meet a lot of people, like, through my hockey team and all, which wouldn't have happened if I had been in a male body. Um, some of the best friends I have are from hockey and all, and I wouldn't have met them had I been male. Um, been born male. Do you think societal gender norms influence your gender identity, or is it mostly a biological feeling? I don't like the term biological feeling. Um, I would say it's more of a mental thing. And not mental as in crazy, but I mean, um, I don't know, I don't think feelings are biological. <laughs> um, do you think societal gender norms influence your gender identity? Um, I wouldn't say it's societal gender norms, although, like, I guess we all have some type of like, we all have a general idea of who we want to be, and who we want to be perceived as. Um, like, if I had to give myself labels, I hate labels, but if I had to pick categories that I would hope I dabble in, um, I would have to say the, the art kid who looks like he should be on a fishing boat. <laughs> like, I mean, most of the time I'm in like a v-neck, white, um, white undershirt and some kind of plaid shorts. But, I mean, the root of who I am is in the art industry, so sometimes, you know, you'll see me in some flamboyantly gay-looking outfit. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know really how to answer that question. Do you think societal gender norms influence your gender identity? I think we all pick and choose the societal norms for different, for different
for different kind of cliques, I guess, or um, perceived identities, like the prep, the skater, the whatever, the you know, whatever. Um, hopefully we pick and choose and we're not forced to them.